Denise and I have the honor and the pleasure to introduce a person who's very special to us. A person who is a true visionary, one of the most visionary people, frankly, that I know. He's a person that was named by Forbes as one of the world's top social entrepreneurs. It was really an incredible honor. He's also the founder and CEO of Genesis Works. Please welcome Rafael Alvarez. Thank you, Denise and Charles. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done to lead us and put this evening together. Uh, we have a small token of our appreciation for you uh, on our table, so uh, please enjoy it. And thank you all for coming and being with us tonight. We know you have many things to do with your time, and the fact that you're here tonight to help us celebrate our anniversary truly means a lot to us. People say that a kid's future depends very much on which side of the track they grow in, they grow up in, right? But really, when you think about it, more important than which side of the track they grew up in is which track they're actually on. You see, we're product of our environment. We do what those around us expect of us. I went to college because those around me were going to college. But do you know, do you know that there's right now thousands of kids in this city and in every major city in America that are growing up in environments where success just means getting a minimum wage job, holding on to it for a few paychecks. The thought of them going in to a corporation and becoming a professional? Are you kidding? That's, that's just not their world they come to believe. This, this became very clear to me a little over 10 years ago as I was serving on the board of directors of a high school. And I went to the graduation ceremony and I saw all the students really happy about graduating. I thought for many, this was in itself an accomplishment. And so I went down to the floor because I wanted to personally congratulate them. And I said, congratulations, what are you going to do now? And they said, one by one, they said the same thing. And they said, I'm just going to continue in my job. And I said, well, what do you do? Well, I'm a cashier, I'm a hand packer, I'm in construction, I'm in maintenance, I'm in fast food. And I thought, OK, so these are good jobs when you're in high school. But what happens three, four, five years later when these students have left any kind of formal education? What happens then? How can they ever switch from that into a profession that is going to allow them to live in the economic mainstream? It can't. It doesn't happen. So I was looking at these young students. They were right in front of me. They were full of life, smart kids. And I thought, my goodness, I could see their future. I could see their future, and I didn't like what I saw. The reason I could see their future is because in my corporate life, I traveled around the world, going to factories everywhere, including many factories here in the United States. And I saw thousands of people in the line working day in, day out, making widgets, earning minimum wage, working two paychecks just to live paycheck to paycheck. And here that night, I had these students in front of me. And what I thought is that these students were on that track of life, the only track their family has ever known. And then I thought, what if these students just had the opportunity to discover that there's a whole new track in life? What if through a meaningful internship, working before they graduate from high school, what if they could only discover that they can 
participate in a corporation. They can succeed as a professional. And if they do that, they can live a much better life. I knew, I knew businesses needed services. The question was, could I train these students to provide the services that businesses were going to need and were going to be willing to pay for? And if I could have these students do those services, could I change the track of their life? Could it be that simple? Now we know and we read about all the challenges that this student population has. Right? And could it be that simple to change the trajectory of life? I believe so. I believe that it really could be that simple. And so, 10 years ago today, today, Genesis Works was born. I quit my corporate job, and I decided to pursue what I truly believed in. Yeah, but before I quit my job, I had to talk to my wife. And so I went to Stephanie with this idea, and I said, Honey, what do you think about this? Now, for many of you in the room, this could have sounded like a crazy idea. But you know what? She didn't think so. In fact, what she said, she said, finally, finally, you came up with an idea that makes sense. <laughs> and Stephanie, she became a number one supporter right there. And her support, yeah. And let me tell you the hair support I have needed throughout the years. I needed her support back at the beginning, in the beginning years, where, frankly, I didn't think we were going to make it. And when I'd come home and be all worried, she would just tell me, she goes, listen, honey, this has to work. It just makes sense, she would say. And she gave me the energy to keep going. And so I needed her support there, and I needed her support now and throughout. Okay? Because let there be no doubt, without her support, I couldn't have done this. So thank you, honey. Okay, so that's one supporter. I needed many more. Yes. I needed schools to believe that their students could accomplish so much more in life than what they had been expected to. I needed corporations to believe that we could have a new workforce, cost-effective, flexible, that wanted to be there and they could actually provide the services that they needed instead of the traditional high school internship that they were used to. And I needed corporations to believe that they didn't have to choose between what's good for the community or what's good for business, that with Genesis Works, they could do both. And I needed funders. I needed funders to believe that this new idea could be the best investment that they could ever make. And I needed to hire the very best people I could find. Even though I knew that they could make a lot more money working elsewhere, I needed them to join our cause. And for the people who are really just couldn't afford, I asked them to be on the board. <laughs> Got them for free. <laughs> I needed all of them. I needed all of them to believe that working together, we truly could do something amazing. And they did. They joined us. And last, I also needed the support and the encouragement that I found every Sunday at church from many of my friends who are here tonight. The last 10 years have been unbelievable. In this room tonight, we have the best friends, the best companies, the best funders, the best partners, the best group of people I have ever worked with in my life. 
Why? Because we came together to do something truly amazing. And I really, really thank you. It's working. Over 95% of our students go on to college. 95% of our students go on to college. And not just in Houston. No, what started out here as a small little concept to help a few kids is spreading first to Minneapolis, St. Paul, then Chicago, soon to other cities in America. And guess what? Now we're getting calls from other countries. Just two weeks ago, I was with the Prime Minister of Ireland who totally gets the power that the meaningful internship can have for youth. Unbelievable. Now, has this journey been easy? No, not always. And certainly not, as we have been doubling in size every two years. But I cannot imagine something that could be more rewarding. I mean, when you look at our students and you see them realize that they have more options in life, and that they can accomplish so much more. When you see our corporations benefit from the work that these students provide and then forget that they're high school students. When you see national publications like Forbes magazine name us as one of the top 30 organizations of our kind in the world. When you see the White House recognize us and, and listen to the President of the United States of America speak publicly about how Genesis works must be replicated throughout the country. Wow. Wow. Yes, I do believe we have done some amazing things. And now, do I believe that our next 10 years are going to be even more amazing than our last? Yeah. Do I believe that soon we will go from serving hundreds of students to thousands every year? Yes. Do I believe that the future of this country depends on its ability to connect business to education in a major way and that we, we are uniquely positioned to serve as that bridge? Absolutely, absolutely I do. But that, my friends, is a conversation that starts tomorrow. Because tonight, tonight is about celebrating. Tonight, we celebrate you for being there for us. Tonight, we celebrate everything that we've done together. So whether you joined us tonight or you joined us 10 years ago, tonight, we are here together on our collective belief that Together, we really can change the track of life for youth. We can change the track of life for youth. Again, though, we have not been able to do this without the support from a lot of people and a lot of corporations. So please allow me to acknowledge the two corporations that have had the biggest impact on our existence. The first one is El Paso Corporation, tonight's honoree. And you will hear much more about El Paso after dinner. <laughs>